Hi friends and welcome to my channel. I am super newbie to all things YouTube, homeschool, and RV living. So my name is Melissa. I am a mom of three. We have 28 year old boys who are in third grade and a six year old daughter who is in first grade. So this is our very first year of homeschooling. We've been at it for like three weeks. Uh, we love it. I'm so surprised at how much that I actually do love it. And our kids coming out of public school, which they had fantastic experience um, with, and we also loved, they're really enjoying homeschool as well. So <clears throat> just for a little background, we moved from Connecticut to Oregon at the end of the summer, and it just seemed like it was going to be very complicated to take our three kids from a school where they um, knew the teachers. So distance learning was a little bit easier for us to start them in a new school across the country where they wouldn't know anybody and I wouldn't know anybody um, and start distance learning like that. So we decided we would homeschool them for the year. And I really am so grateful that we're able to do this. It's such an adventure. Every day is different. Um, and it's going really, really well. So we are in an RV, which means we really don't have a lot of space. Um, I have one cabinet that is going to be strictly for our homeschool stuff. So what I did was I put every single thing that we got that we needed in that cabinet. What happened is my kids want to read some of the read aloud books. And it's so weird to tell your kids, no, you can't read that. But if I let the boys go ahead and read that, by the time we make our way to that read aloud, my daughter is going to be super into it, whereas the boys are going to have already read it and I don't want them to be bored. So I am saving our read alouds and I have said no to that. What I did was I pulled all of our read alouds out of that one cabinet and I'm going to put them in a bin either at my husband's office or you know, under my bed or somewhere where they're like out of the way. It's just storage is the problem. So probably there. And I'll just keep the books for the month, you know, in the cabinet or in our morning basket. And then I also had put all of our books, um, the readers on the shelf as well, which was also the boys wanting to read ahead, which if they want to read a read aloud, a reader ahead of time, I'll just kind of try to gear them into the one that we're, we're going to be working on next. They love to read, so it's reading's not a problem. I just kind of want to stay on track um, for my own sanity. So what I did was I separated all of the readers. I took them all out and put them all together. I'm just looking for my bin. It's a disaster in here. Hold on. Okay, so what I did was I took all of our readers out of the cabinet and I put them in this one bin. So now, and I did this for my daughter. So we have all of her readers on this side and then all of their readers. And then I just have like the math duties, science DVD and our sing the word. So this will stay in the cabinet. Uh, this way we can pull from it. The boys go through their readers quickly. Um, and then my daughter loves Dr. Seuss books. So like for her, because she's first grade, so it's a, a little bit different. I don't care if she reads these. She's heard most of these stories already. So I don't care if she goes ahead and reads them. But for the boys, because a lot of these do have to do with like certain times of history and they're new stories that they have not read. I do want to stay on track with those because it's, it's a lot more comprehension at their age. So I will put these back in the cabinet. But like I said, I will let them pull from them if they want. The next thing I did, because like I said, I had kept everything in there and it was just like not super organized, even though I thought it was at first. Um, I pulled all the science stuff. So these are all of our science books. There are some more that are in our morning basket, which I'll do another video explaining how I I'm doing that. But so these are our science books. And then these are our history books. Again, we have do have some that we're working through um, this week that I keep in the basket. So these books I will keep in a different spot so that I can just grab from them. And then these books, if the kids wanna go ahead and read, like they are loving. They're loving this children's encyclopedia and this living long ago. So these books, I don't care if they wanna 
peek through, go ahead, um, whatever. Like, I don't care if they want to look at those. That's awesome. So I will keep those all where they can access them easily. Uh, yeah. So the next thing that I wanted to show you guys was I got these. These are totally new this week. I just picked them up, I think on Monday. Um, so these are new to us and I wasn't really sure if I wanted to order them. To be honest, <laughs> I love like farmhouse style natural color things. So these colored bins aren't really my jam. However, they're working really well for us. And I mean, it's like their school stuff. So it's okay if it's colorful. What I did was um, I put everything, each kid has one. And then I put everything, their individual things in that bin. So we've been doing school outside all week. What they do is they get their bin and bring it outside and then they have all of their individual things right there in it, which includes their math workbook, their, this is the language arts uh, book. This is their copy work. I am having them keep a journal just because I feel like it's good for their writing and we're doing something we never thought we'd do, homeschooling and living in the RV. So it's actually going to be very cool for them to look back at when they are a little bit older and they're enjoying it. They have the book that they're working uh, working through. This is like their personal reading book that they read at night. Um, they went ahead in their readers. So today during the reading time, they were able to read their personal books. These I'm not choosing. I am encouraging them. My boys love to read and they can flip flop all around. So I am encouraging them to finish one book, start to finish, and then do another one and go from there. So they have that in there. Uh, we did for cursive, they wrote little letters this week. So I do have to help them tomorrow. We're going to stamp them and do all that. So that goes in there. Their cursive handwriting without tears. I love this. This is literally teaching them how to do cursive on their own. It's very, very impressive. I'm really, really, really happy with this. Then I also bound up their science books. So these are all of their worksheets, which I just feel like this is super easy to keep everything. I definitely could have just put it in a folder or a notebook or something like that, but I, I do really, really like this. I feel like it also helps them to like when they're done with science, they close it and put science away and then they open up the next thing. So I do feel like it keeps them on task. Then they each have their own whiteboard and a folder, which just has like miscellaneous things. They, you know, were doing studying Egypt. They did these little Egyptian necklaces. They have their Bible verses, all that stuff. This can go in there. And then that all goes neatly in their little thing and makes this mama really happy because it's all nice and organized. And then I'll show you where I'm going to put these. All right, this little basket, simple. I just have extra glue sticks, index cards, uh, Uno cards, playing cards. We went to Yellowstone last week. This is Yellowstone. It's like a timeline, but it's with cards. So I, I bought this. The homeschooling mom and me, even though I'm very new to this, could not stop and not buy it. So I got this. This is cool. We'll, we'll play around with this. And then we have sight word bingo for my daughter and she has some cards in here. And I just keep all of that in there. If I need something, I can just grab it and like throw it in her basket for the day um, and go from there. So that's that. And then we have this. Oh, this is it guys. This is our little cabinet for all of our stuff. So we have one, two, three, four shelves for all the things. You ready? And I'm happy with it. I think it's going to work. But I'm sure that I will change things because I already changed things from what I told you I was going to do to when I put it in the cabinet. So here we go. All 
All right. I actually went ahead and wrote their schedules out and put them here just for reference. And I feel like the more they see things, the better it is. Here is our daughter's bucket. This is everything she needs for the day, including her readers. Here is a, another one of these bins. These are all books that she took out of our storage unit the other day that she wanted to have here. What I'll do is if she starts to get bored of some of these, I will just go ahead and uh, switch them out. Of course, there we go. Here are just some family favorites. These are some new books I got. We love Little House on the Prairie. So we had gotten that at a, a uh, antique store. Then we move up. The boys' bins, they each have their own. I do not have their readers in here just because it would be more complicated to keep it. I just keep it in our morning basket because then it's always with me. And they can just take turns with it. Like I said, their schedules are different uh, for the readers. Then I have our math books. These are my lesson books for math. And then they each have their math book in their thing. Um, their, fold, their binders go up here. This is the same as Autumn's. This is Joshua and Christian's books that they took out of the storage unit. Like I said, I will just replace those. And these they can probably pull out and keep in their beds, but we'll see. And then this is just my little bucket. It has plain paper, a folder where I keep things like stuff I made for our read aloud celebration, ideas, that kind of thing. And then these are their math tests that I use on Fridays. And then our timeline that also I think we're just going to stick to doing once a week to kind of review what we learned for the week. Then up here I have our map and I have this is that little basket with our miscellaneous things. I also didn't show you guys. I got this little thing to put pens and stuff in, markers, crayons, whatever, if we go to the park or something. And then I actually switched <laughs> what I did. So I will show you. Don't fall out on me. So we switched this. I had all of their readers in here, but I took those out and then I put all the history and science stuff in here because it just wasn't going to work to have these anywhere else. So now I know this is our history and science besides the DVDs, uh, books, and they can pick through those and we use them for our assignments. Well, that's it, you guys. I hope that I did not say, um, as much as I have in my last few videos that I did. I'm really working on that. And that's how I'm organizing our homeschool in our little RV. It is working. You do not need nearly as much stuff as you think that you do. And like I said, I'm sure, you know, we will switch this up again. But for now, I feel like this is an easy way. The kids know where all of their own things are. They can be pretty independent when grabbing them and organizing them and stay on top of that stuff. And the books are where they can get them easily. And uh, yeah, so I am going to ask you guys to give me a thumbs up and hit that little subscribe button. Also, I am going to probably tomorrow or the next day post a video on our morning basket because obviously if you are homeschooling, you're probably wondering where the rest of our stuff is and that is in our morning basket and that's where everything we do as a family is and my instructor guides and all that. So I will do a video and show you that. Let me know what you think of this one. And thank you for tuning in.